Solomon asked God for wisdom. It, it was a, a wonderful thing for him to do. And then the Lord came to Solomon and he gave him a wisdom that he told him, and it stands to this day, there'll never be, other than Jesus Christ himself, there'll never be another person in the world that will measure up to the wisdom I'm about to give you. As a matter of fact, he became so wise that people were afraid of him. The, the people of Israel, it says in verse 28 of chapter three, it says, and all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had rendered and they feared the king for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice. So he, he could know what was truth and what was a lie in others. Two women approached him and there was a child that was alive and a child that had passed away and both claimed that the living child was theirs and the child that had passed away belonged to the other one. And Solomon, the way he executed judgment in this situation, it really did cause a, a fear to erupt in the hearts of all those who had seen how God had made him so incredibly wise. He was given this ability to judge what was right and what was wrong in the lives of other people that were under his leadership. Now we fast forward from this all the way to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 3. And Solomon at the end of his days deviated in a sense. Uh, there's never been a greater wisdom than was given to this man. But at the end of his days he's listless, he's disillusioned. And he's drifted shockingly away from God and the calling that was on his life. Verse three says, I searched in my heart how to gratify my flesh with wine. Could you imagine? This man has given more wisdom than anybody in the history of the world has ever had. He has been given the guardianship in a sense of the testimony, the actual physical testimony of God on the earth at that time. He's given the guardianship of that place and of the house and of the temple and of the sacrifice. And he's supposed to be the wisest man and was that has ever lived, but he starts drinking. Isn't that amazing? Looking for happiness. He's, he's, I, I've often said it this way. He's, he left the answer to pursue the question. He said, I searched in my heart how to gratify my flesh with wine while guiding my heart with wisdom. I find it ironic that one of the biggest questions in the Pentecostal church and charismatic church today is about this issue of drinking wine among God's people. But this is the point where Solomon began to backslide. The very first thing he did is started drinking alcohol and it, he didn't think it was going to lead him to building heathen temples, but it did in the long run. I, I sought to lay hold on folly. In other words, I, I, I just went out and I decided I'm, I'm going to just start living life and having a good time till I might see what was good for the sons of men to do under heaven all the days of their lives. In verse 15, he said, so I said in my heart, as it happened to the fool, it also happens to me. So why was I then more wise? Then I said in my heart, this also is vanity. So he comes to the point of saying that wisdom is pointless. There's no real point to having wisdom if, it, if I end up just as the fool does. In verse 17 of chapter two, he says, therefore I hated life because the work that was done under the sun was distressing to me for all is vanity or empty or grasping for the wind. Isn't it sad? How, how did this happen to this man? How do you start out with such wisdom? where people are coming from around the world just to hear you speak. That's what happened with Solomon. The queen of Sheba came with a huge entourage with questions. And the Bible says he told her all the answers to all of her questions. And she was, she was so aghast at the wisdom this man had that the scripture says there was no more breath left in her. He was given a mind and an understanding of things and the ability to judge of given him of God. But you see, what happened to him? Where did he, how did he drift so far from his calling? Well, the, the clue is in 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 9. In uh, one of our scriptures that we were reading at the beginning, where he says, Therefore give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? Here's the point. He asked for wisdom to judge between good and evil in others, not in himself. That's the point. You see, and that's, that's the human tendency, I suppose, in a lot 
of God's people. It could be in all of us where we, we're getting this, this learning. We're, we're, we're discerning what's right and what's wrong. And we can discern everybody, but we can't discern ourselves. We fail to understand that the true measure of wisdom is in just being able to discern the motives of my own heart. He told the people, listen to some of the things that Solomon told the people around him. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 2, verses 16 to 19, he's it, he told the people to beware of the seductions of this world. He says, to deliver you from the immoral woman, from the seductress who flatters with her words, who forsakes the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house leads down to death and her paths to the dead and none who go to her return, nor do they regain the paths of life. Now this is Solomon's instruction to other people, but when you look at his own life later on, in 1 Kings chapter 11, it says Solomon loved many foreign women, the daughters of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites, from the nations of whom the Lord had said to the children of Israel, you shall not intermarry with them, nor they with you. And surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clung to these in love. Now he's warning others not to do this in the book of Proverbs. He's writing it all down for the sake of others, but he himself is not obeying what he's writing. He has this wisdom, but it's all for others. It's not for himself. He had 700 wives. That proves he's, he didn't have any. What he, I was leading a men's Bible study one time and uh, this, I, I read this scripture and an older man, he just sighed and he shook his head and he said, only a fool would want more than one wife. <laughs> he had 700 wives and 300 concubines and his wives turned away his heart. But isn't that what he wrote in Proverbs? To deliver you from the seductress who flatters and forgets the coming of her God. Her house leads down to death, her past to the dead and none who return to to go to her return again, nor do they find the paths of life. And so it was, 1 Kings eleven four. 4, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned his heart after other gods. His heart was not loyal to the God of the Lord his God, and as was the heart of David his father. And Solomon, that's a Solomon, Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Am Milcom, the God where people would place their babies on the red hot heated hands of an idol to burn them to death. Solomon, of all people, Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and did not fully follow the Lord as did David his father. And Solomon built a high place for Chemos, the abomination of Moab, on the hill that is east of Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the people of Ammon. He, he did the same thing or likewise for all his foreign wives who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. And so he was great on giving advice to others, but very poor on incorporating it into his own life. 